Hi guys, Sarah here with Selmond. Today I'm going to show you how I made these three different styles of adorable fall pumpkins for my decor. So stick around and watch how I achieve this using mostly Dollar Tree products. All right, for this first project, what I'm gonna use is this pumpkin that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and it's one of the shiny metallic styrofoam ones, but you're not even gonna see that when we get done with this first project. And on the back side here, you can see I set something heavy on top of it. I completely squished my pumpkin, but I'm gonna show you how I fixed that using just hot glue and some of this jute cord, which I'd picked up, I think I got it at, at uh, Walmart. I'm pretty sure I did. And these two items along with some hot glue are going to be basically what this first project is made of. As you can see I pulled out the stem of the pumpkin and I pulled out the price tag of course. Now here you can see me I have decided I was going to measure out and cut each strip of the jute that I was going to use on this pumpkin. As you can see, as we get further into, into the project, I got over this real quick. It was wasting uh, some of the jute, as well as taking extra time that I really didn't need to waste on this. So once these pieces are gone that I had cut, I just went on to pulling it and cutting it directly off the spool. All right, now here I'm taking my cut pieces and I am hot gluing them onto the pumpkin itself. The idea is the entire pumpkin will be covered with the jute twine. So I started out here, was just going to go around the entire pumpkin at once, but I quickly realized it would be far easier to lay it out if I went into all the indentations and laid out the twine first, and then went back over it to cover in the larger pieces. And I do want to thank everybody for being patient with me um, throughout this video and a couple others that may come out. I got a cold a couple weeks ago. It turned into bronchitis a few days ago. So as I was filming this, I was not telling you what I was doing as I was filming. And right now I am learning how to do the voiceovers as and some new editing software. So hopefully this will all turn out really well for all of us. All right, so here I'm going back over and for each individual section of the pumpkin, I am moving back and forth, if you know what I mean, um, placing the twine down, placing it on one side of the section, then going back, placing it on the other side of the section. So as I move inward, the middle stays in the middle. Um, and you will see why as I get further into finishing this section because all the pieces become smaller as because of, of the way the sections balloon out I guess I would say so each piece gets cut smaller and smaller till the very middle piece is extremely small and so the best way to do this is to go ahead and work back and forth side to side to keep everything even on both ends and then I'm just going to keep moving around the pumpkin section by section until the entire thing is covered. Now when I first started doing this I thought oh my gosh what have I gotten myself into this is going to take forever but again once I stopped pre-cutting all those pieces of jute and just started um, laying it out and cutting it as I went it saved a lot of time and the cutting and the laying out and the trimming and um, so it cut that time 
at least in half. And then once I got started and got more confident in what I was doing, this really didn't take that long at all. So covering the entire pumpkin took me probably about 20 minutes to a half hour. I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I had just turned on something to watch and was just enjoying myself as I went, as I often do with my craft projects. Just getting lost in the tediousness of some of the steps and just watching something fun um, on Netflix or Amazon Prime or wherever I may decide that something worthy of watching is on that particular day depending on the mood I'm in. Now that the pumpkin is completely covered with the twine, I wanted to go ahead and burn off not only some of the edges, but also give it kind of an old, more antique -y look. So I used my propane, my sorry, my butane torch. Now you can also do this with a lighter. It just takes a little bit longer and you just need to be careful. This is not part of the project for kids. Now that I have the pumpkin finished and singed the way I like it, I am going to use one of these leaves from an earlier project and a twig I got off of one of our trees outside. And for the twig, I am just going to go ahead and cut it down. I don't need it quite as long as it is. And I'm just going to keep cutting until I can easily snap it in half. I am using a safety blade I picked up at Dollar Tree. Now I'm just going to take the twig and the leaves. I've gone ahead and poked the twig through the leaves already and I'm adding some hot glue into the center of the pumpkin and I'm just going to glue that down in and I'm just going to adhere the leaves very lightly with a little bit of hot glue here on the top so they don't flop around or come loose on me because I don't have those hot glued to the stem itself. And once that is done, the pumpkin is done. And this came out just adorable. I absolutely love this pumpkin. I think it's one of my favorites this year. For this next pumpkin project, I'm going to use corks. And these came out of wine bottles that I've saved up for quite a while. I have bought corks before, but these are ones that actually all came out of wine bottles that yeah, we've drank. Um, these are all real corks, none of the, the silicone or synthetic ones. I really don't like those as well, and so I try to stick to the natural cork. And what I'm going to do for the large pumpkin, I'm going to glue several of these corks together and there you can see I'm just checking I want the damaged sides of the cork to all be facing up because the bottom side is going to be the side we end up finishing in the end here. So the top row here I am just going to glue a set of three corks together in a straight line. Then I'm going to go down with four corks and glue those together and then as you'll see, it goes three, four, five, four, three again. So what we have basically is a circle of corks when we're through. Now, in order to paint the cork, I'm using some of this Waverly Super Premium High Performance Semi-Gloss in Coral. And I thought this was chalk paint when I was picking it up. I wasn't paying attention, but I really like the color. Now I do like this paint. It seems to be giving pretty good coverage at least over uh, the cork and so I think this would be a good alternative for chalk paint if you do want a little bit of sheen but you don't want to spend the time doing two or three coats of something. I think this would be a good alternative. Now as you can see I'm going and wiping the excess paint off and then I'm going and painting the sides of the corks. And the reason that I'm wiping off the excess is because I want a little bit of the cork texture to show through. 
I don't want a whole lot because I do want the color to be there, but I do want you to be able to tell that these are still corks in the end. So once I have the sides and the front painted, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and leave it dry. Of course, I am using my heat tool because I am impatient, so anything that helps um, dry the paint a little bit faster, I'm all for. Now, here I put together a smaller pumpkin uh, just to complete a set of two, and this one is just three corks, four, and then three again, and I'm painting it over with, again, the same um, Waverly Super Premium in Coral. And I'm going to go ahead and wipe that down. But then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some of the Waverly Chalk Paint and Plaster, and I'm going to go over the damp paint, um, so of the, go over some of the damp coral paint, I'm sorry, um, so that it gives a very soft orange tint to this plaster chalk paint. And as you can see, it just, it mixes a little bit, gives it a very um, light, light orange color, still reminiscent a little bit of the fall. It's not quite um, just the plain plaster color. And I really like the way the two came out. So I'm gonna let that dry with, again, a little bit of help with my heat tool. Now, here again, I'm taking a couple pieces of that twig and um, I have them already cut down to the size I wanted. I'm just sanding the ends so there's no jaggedy edges. And once that is done, I am going to go ahead and place them into the corks. Now, I am just going to take a pair of scissors first. I was trying to see if I could just bore a hole easily into the corks, which I couldn't. So now I'm taking my utility knife and I am cutting a hole out of the corks um, just so I can fit the twig down inside of it so that you won't see a mound of glue on the top um, holding the twig on. I really think that would look tacky even though a lot of it would be covered. And once I get those holes kind of drilled out with my knife, I am going to go ahead and get those glued in and then I am going to take some of these little wooden stickers I picked up at Dollar Tree. There were some of these oak leaves as well as some pumpkins. And for this first one, I am just coloring it over with one of my Prismacolor pens, and I believe this was apple green. And I'm going ahead and coloring both sides of this one. I wasn't sure how I was going to place it, if both sides would show or not. And I'm just wiping off the excess alcohol ink which looks great. It looks like a stain. I can't really see that it's picking it up well here, but it does look wonderful when it's done. And then I'm taking some of this green wire I picked up in the floral department at Dollar Tree. And even though I'm a little bit off screen, I just wound it around the dowel and then pulled it off so it would look like one of those tendrils that come down from a pumpkin. Um, I glued my leaf on and then I'm just going to glue that little wire tendril on down in the back of the pumpkin. Now I'm taking the smaller cork pumpkin and again I'm boring out a hole in order to place the twig into and I'm just going to hot glue that twig in as well. Right now here I'm taking my copper Krylon uh, gold leafing pen and I'm giving the leaf a couple coats of the um, Krylon copper leaf as well as the stem. I really like the way the copper sets off against that um, creamy chalk paint color with just that little hint of orange that got mixed into it the way we painted it. I think it's really pretty. So I went ahead and gave both the stem and the leaf a couple coats of the the copper leaf just to really have that shine show through. Right now here I'm taking some of the gold or brass wire whatever you want to call it that you can pick up at Dollar Tree and again 
Most of the wrapping was done off screen, unfortunately, but you could kind of see how it looked wrapped around that dowel. And again, I pulled it off. And here I'm just trying to lay out exactly how I want it to look on the pumpkin, get that glued down real well. And I'm just getting the placement of the leaf and getting that hot glued on as well. And there in the back, just reinforcing it all a little bit so that it won't come loose. And didn't those turn out just adorable? For this last project, I'm using some of these copper scrub pads that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use all three of them for one pumpkin. So here you can see I'm trying to find the opening or a good place to start tearing these apart because what they are is they are copper netting that has been rolled together. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unroll these and then re-roll them so instead of three small pads I get one large one that will be shaped into a pumpkin. All right, so here you can see me unwrapping and unraveling these uh, copper scrubbies. And I'm just kind of playing around to figure out how best to lay them out into a pumpkin shape. And now that I have it completed, um, if I were to do it again, I'd unwrap all three of them completely and then roll them together into one big scrubby um, rather than just kind of playing with it the way I did. Um, it, it was kind of messy the way I did it the first time, but live and learn. So um, here you can see me kind of shaping it into um, kind of the round squishy shape that I would want for the pumpkin. And then just kind of forming the top so that everything looks a little bit neat. And then I'm going to be twisting the top around. Um, just so I have an idea where to put my wire in order to close it off here in just a minute. Right now that I have the pumpkin pretty much laid out how I want it, um, as far as the copper is concerned, I'm taking my brass wire and wrapping it around the dowel again. This time I did it a little bit different where I wrapped both ends and left the middle, as you can see at the top there, open or flat, I guess you would say, because I'm going to wrap it around the stem here that I'm gluing in um, and the, the top of the copper uh, mesh before I cut that mesh off. So there you can see it's just been wrapped around and... I'm working at getting this mesh cut off now, getting it down out of my way, getting the stem pushed down in deep enough. It, I had to play with this one for quite a bit to get it how I wanted it to look, but um, it is a lot larger pumpkin than you would get if you just used a single one of those scrubbies, which is what I wanted in the end. So here I'm just working on gluing that uh, stem down in the end and this particular stem I got at Walmart in a bag of um, vase filler that was just wood and I saw a lot of potential in that bag of wood so this is the first time I've used the one of the wood pieces in my projects and um, you'll probably see a lot more of those coming up in the future because they almost but not quite have the look of of uh, driftwood. They're, there's no bark on them or anything. Um, they're clean already. And here I'm taking two more of the leaf stickers that I got at Dollar Tree. This time I'm using my silver Krylon metal leafing pen to color the leaves. And again I'm going to give both of these a couple coats. Um, and it is just, again, so we get that metallic sheen. I wanted to keep everything metallic, especially on this pumpkin, um, to go with the copper and to set it off. All 
Right, and here I'm working on trying to place the leaves, and I decided in looking at it that I really didn't like that stem being a bare wood, so I'm taking my copper leafing pen again, and I'm coloring the stem with the, the copper leafing this time, just so it would blend in with all the other metals that are in this particular pumpkin. And it worked out really well in the end, as you'll be able to see. Now, I really want to thank everybody again for sticking with me. I know my voice isn't the best, and at this point in the video, I am really struggling not to be coughing. I can hear my voice getting uh, froggier, I guess would be the non-word to use. Um, but hopefully, my voice will start getting stronger again here every day, and I'll be back to my old self soon. Now that I have the, the copper stem painted, I just need to go ahead and place my two leaves and get these secured on, and this pumpkin is done as well. So here are all the fall pieces that we made today set up on the mantle and getting ready for the upcoming fall holidays. Don't they look adorable together? If you have any Christmas crafts you would like to see done, please let me know in the comments below as I will be starting my 50 Christmas crafts in 50 days soon. And I would really like to know what projects you would like to see. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And as always, have a great day and stay crafty!